Imagine waking up one morning, going about your usual routine, checking your emails, getting started with work, or even watching some hmm, videos, but there is no internet. How would you do if one day you realized that the entire world was offline? How would it feel to suddenly be thrown back to the pre-internet era? What was life like before the internet anyway? Most of us can't even remember. Even if we were alive back then, let alone the fact that most teens and young adults today never experienced that time. I mean, some babies today are basically live-streamed from the moment they're born. That's exactly what this episode is about. Stan and his family spend all night glued to their computers. Shelly, who has an online boyfriend named Amir. Now, Shelly. Why do you hate me? Stan's dad is totally hooked on adult content. And Stan just mindlessly browsing. Off. Man. Meanwhile, Stan's mom is trying to get everyone to bed, saying they can pick up where they left off tomorrow. But the next morning, as soon as they wake up, before doing anything else, they all rush to their computers, even Stan's dad, who watches, you know what, at the crack of dawn. Seriously, who does that? And then they're hit with something that both shocks and terrifies them. What the hell? The internet is down. On average, people spend 6.5 hours a day online, and as time goes on, that number keeps climbing. At first, it might not sound like a big deal, and compared to countries like some in Africa where people are online for 9 hours a day, it might even seem low. But think about it this way. If the average person lives to be 65, that is 17 years spent online, and with remote work and more jobs moving online, that number's only going up. Stan's family is clearly addicted to the internet. They end their day with it, start their day with it, and it's obvious when they all jump out of bed and head straight for their computers without even having real jobs or any critical responsibilities to handle. But let's be honest, don't we all do the same thing? The first thing we check in the morning is our notifications, and only then do we get out of bed. Hasn't that made you wonder if, maybe, we're addicted to the internet too? Just, you know, not in the same way Stan's dad is. When the family realizes the internet is down for everyone, they panic and get stressed. Everyone just, just calm down! Calm down, all right? It's going to be okay. We just can't panic! It is a sign of how much time people spend on the internet, both free time and otherwise. This habit can affect their family, work, relationships, and even their health. Another symptom of internet addiction is mood swings and the fear that they won't be able to get back online. The only thing that can calm them down is restoring their internet access. Shelly feels like she needs to get in touch with Amir as soon as possible because it is something they do every morning before school. She's worried Amir might think she's dead and find himself a new online girlfriend. Stan's dad is also dealing with some discomfort in a certain area. And it is obvious he has developed an addiction to porn. We see him spending all his time watching porn and ignoring his wife, which is something we all know happens when someone becomes addicted. But that isn't the only impact porn addiction can have. We're not here to argue about watching porn or masturbating. People can have their own opinions, religious or otherwise. But what we do agree on are the harmful effects porn addiction can bring. If my darling Amir gets another internet girlfriend, I'm gonna kill him! And you! Ah, ah, ah. Aside from ruining someone's sex life and emotional connection with their partner, after a while, it can even lower their sexual drive. Unlike when you first get hooked and feel like your sex drive is out of control. But don't get too excited thinking you're turning into the hall, because that is just the beginning. Porn addiction can also lead to unrealistic ideas about sex, making you expect yourself or your unfortunate partner to perform like a porn star. One thing that can help prevent internet porn addiction is proper sex education, something we've covered in previous episodes. This teaches kids from the get-go that online porn and the people you see there are far from reality. It isn't something you should be using to learn about sex. At most, it should be limited to two or three times a week alone. I think the concern here comes from the fact that the US holds the record for the most visits to porn sites in 2024, with a huge lead over the runner-up, Indonesia. We won't keep naming names to embarrass anyone, but for those of you not paying for premium access, you might never be identified. Like any other addiction, 
porn and internet addiction cause a large release of dopamine from a part of the brain called the hypothalamus. This hormone creates feelings of joy and excitement. But when someone stops using the internet or watching porn, their dopamine levels drop drastically, causing symptoms of depression, anxiety, and even fear. The only way for them to feel good again is to get that dopamine rush by going back to the internet or porn, similar to how drug users keep using to feel high. But the similarities between internet addiction and drug addiction don't end there. Just like with alcohol and drugs, over time, people need to spend more time online or watching porn to get the same dopamine high as before. As a result, they gradually lose their family, health, and money. So maybe it's better to stick to free porn. Besides that dopamine rush, other reasons for internet and porn addiction include escaping from problems or experiencing a sense of freedom that the online world gives. It feels like there is no world outside the computer in front of you. Even personality disorders and mental health issues can contribute, as can being shy. Some people feel more comfortable distancing themselves from their family and friends and prefer spending time with people online because they don't feel the need to be embarrassed in front of them, just like Shelly. What if my sweetheart is online looking for me? He could be wondering why I don't get online with him. Maybe he thinks I'm dead. Feelings of loneliness, stress, and constant fear in daily life can also be warning signs of internet and porn addiction. For years, schools, families, society, and even the internet have warned us about the dangers of alcohol and drugs. We all know how damaging they can be to our lives and the people around us, but no one has really warned us about internet and porn addiction to the same extent. We don't see them as harmful as drugs and alcohol, even if we do realize how disruptive they can be. We often don't know how to fight it. The family, desperate to find out where their internet has gone, heads over to Kyle's house to use theirs, only to find out they don't have internet either. When everyone steps outside, they realize it isn't just their homes. Everyone's internet is down. It is like the whole town's gone mad, as if the world is ending. And now, they need to prepare for the worst. It's not working, Gerald. But it has to work! Maybe if I put Your it internet's out. not working, Gerald! Face it! Stan's family and Kyle's join forces, trying to head to public spots that always have internet. But when they get there, they face the same result as before. Tons of people are gathered outside the store, screaming in panic, but there is no internet there either. After a lot of thinking about what people used to do before the internet, they end up storming into a TV shop, like zombies attacking the town, driven insane. They break the windows, Stan's dad leading the charge, and turn on the TV to see what's going on. But the news says there are no updates today because they can't access the internet, leaving them in the dark about what's happening in the world. Isn't it crazy how almost every aspect of our lives depends on the internet now? Life without the internet feels like the apocalypse. Towns empty out, no music plays, and we don't even feel like talking to anyone anymore sinking into complete depression. For Stan's family, this situation becomes unbearable. The only person who stays calm is Stan's mom, who never relied much on the internet to begin with. Sure, she needed it for emails and online errands, but when it disappeared, she was just mildly surprised. She didn't lose her mind like the rest of the family, but for everyone else, it wasn't that easy. And after eight days without the internet, they started showing physical symptoms. <coughs> When you're addicted to something, going without it doesn't just mess with your head. You start to feel it in your body too, like aches and even flu-like symptoms. Stan's dad starts coughing, but he can't even look up why or figure out what medicine to take because there is no internet. Shelly loses it and starts hitting Stan, furious about losing her online boyfriend. Why take it out on poor Stan? As the family gets overwhelmed by anger, depression, and physical symptoms, they realize they can't stay like this any longer. They do anything for just a bit of internet. It is like we're watching a documentary on meth addiction. So they pack up everything, literally everything in their house, and decide to leave town in search of a place that still has internet. It is like the walking dead as they head west toward California, where rumors say there might be some internet left. Along the way, they stop at a motel, but it is packed with desperate people, so they end up camping out. The scene shifts to black and white to represent the bleak world without internet, as if we've gone back to the 
days of black and white TV, or maybe it is just the depression draining all the color out of life. People gather in a lifeless crowd and Stan's dad starts singing a sad song. He hasn't watched porn in eight days and would probably give anything to see some Japanese girls from right about now. They start sharing their stories, where they came from, what's happened in their town, and how they all hope that when they reach California, they might just get one click of the internet. Some even say they'd click on ads if it meant they could go online. Then a guy with a hoarse voice, classic in any apocalypse movie, steps forward to crush their hope. <laughs> Get online, he says. What's so funny about that? He explains that California barely has any internet left, and the number of people flocking there is in the millions. The speed is so slow that it takes days just to load a single website. These people clearly have never experienced dialogue. He goes on to say that he lost his own kids. They sat in front of the computer for three days, waiting for a website to load, but by the time it did, they died of hunger and thirst. They couldn't handle hearing any more tragic stories, so they got up to go to sleep. Don't, don't cry, Shelly. You'll be able to get online when we get to California. <laughs> ah! Tomorrow, they'd continue their journey in search of internet and Asian girls. By morning, they'd finally arrive in California, where the army had set up a massive camp to gather all the depressed and dying people. One by one, they'd drive in and be assigned their own tent. We see people who look like they've been attacked, stripped of everything they had. Laptops sit unused on tables, gathering dust, because without the internet, no one bothers to even look at them. Nobody wants to steal them either. The only thing people crave is internet. When the family hears there's internet there, they think their problems are over. But when others tell them there's only one computer and you have to stand in line for hours, their hopes are crushed. I just wonder what Stan's dad is gonna do about it. They only have 40 seconds to do whatever they want on the computer. All right, time's up. No, no, wait, I haven't entered the shipping information. No! And after that, no matter what you're doing, the soldiers will pull you off, just like the guy who finally managed to order a book on Amazon. But just as he was about to enter his payment info, the soldiers yanked him out of the chair, making way for the next person. No one knew when he'd get another chance to sit at a computer again. Meanwhile, the US government was scrambling to fix the internet. They had a giant machine with an orange light that needed to turn green for the internet to work. And how did we know all this? After days of silence, all facts finally made it to the news station, allowing them to announce two short lines of information. The US president himself showed up to try and diagnose the problem. Remember Stan's dad's issue? Now he had to get his task done in front of millions of people in just 40 seconds. The first part of the problem was the real challenge, not the second. He approached a soldier, complaining that it had been two weeks since he'd last taken care of business, and that, after getting used to the internet, flipping through old magazines just didn't cut it anymore. If he could just take the computer into his tent for three seconds, it'd be good to go. <laughs> I told you the timing wasn't the problem. But as you might guess, that wasn't going to happen. As Stan's dad walked around the camp, clutching his stomach in pain, someone called out to him saying he wasn't the only one there because of that problem. They'd even managed to rig up a porn simulator in one of the tents. N not even what you're thinking, I promise. All Stan's dad had to do was sit at the computer, say what he wanted, and click a button. People really get creative in desperate situations. So he gave it a try, but instead of the real thing, there was someone on the other side of the screen drawing his requests in the worst way possible with a pencil, making it so bad it didn't even resemble the real thing. Yet, somehow, they expected you to get the job done. Yes, folks, this is what happens when you lose the internet and access to free porn. Be grateful if you live in a country where you don't need a subscription. Stan's dad tried every weird fetish he could think of, but not even a drop. Eventually, he stormed out, frustrated. Poor guys, that, that was the best they could do. Well, they could have done other things, but those would have been, let's say, unethical. The only thing that resembled actual internet porn was the subscription fee Stan's dad had to pay at the end. Meanwhile, the government was still trying to fix the internet, like they were dealing with an alien from space. They tried talking to it, wondering if it was angry with them. The president himself was in the scene. They even played music for it, 
But when it didn't respond, the president gave the order to shoot. I've had it with this thing. Fire a warning shot at it. Who voted for this guy? They managed to broadcast all of this live on TV. And when the camera zoomed in on that giant machine they called the internet, the president finally realized what he had to do. He now knew how to restore the internet and become a hero again. As soon as Stan's family lines up behind thousands of other people, the day is over. The army grabs the computer and all its connected wires to put it somewhere no one can reach, and they'll have to start all over again tomorrow. But Stan's dad notices where they placed the computer. It wasn't some mysterious faraway place, just locked up in a cabin at the camp. In the middle of the night, he sneaks in through a window and after days of waiting, finally gets access to the internet. Of course, the first thing he does is visit a porn site, but he's not exactly quiet about it. When people in the army realize what's happening, they hear shouting and animal noises coming from the cabin. I let you guess what kind of search this perverted guy was doing. He's got every fetish you can think of. They think a tiger is attacking someone, so they rush to break into the room. Just when we think Stan's dad is in big trouble, the soldiers find him covered in, well, you guessed it, that gross white stuff all over his face and the walls. He tries to say ghost did it, which is why everything's white, but it's pretty obvious what happened since his pants are down. Plus, there's something called browser history that the soldiers can't check. Things get even worse when his wife and kids walk into the room and see exactly what he's been up to. Meanwhile, on TV, there's a brave young Jewish boy trying to bring the internet back to America. He cautiously approaches the machine, looking like he knows exactly what he's doing. With all eyes on him, he unplugs and replugs the wire behind the device. And after a few seconds, the light turns green again. Reminds me of how we used to fix stuff as kids whenever something froze up. Once everything's back to normal, Shelly and Amir find each other at the camp. And we think we're about to witness one of the most romantic moments of the episode. But instead, they decide to just email each other when they get home. We're back together! We're back together! In the final scene, Stan's dad gives a motivational speech about pornography and the internet at the White House. Wasn't there anyone more qualified for this? He explains that while the internet is important, we shouldn't let it take over every aspect of our lives. This time, the internet went out and came back, but what if it goes for good next time? Oh, and by the way, you should limit your porn consumption to more than twice a week, although I doubt he follows his own advice. He goes on to say, As I've mentioned before, we need to treat this issue like drug addiction. We should limit our access, control ourselves, and if necessary, seek professional help. Nowadays, with the rise of online businesses and after going through the COVID-19 era, we've realized just how dependent we are on the internet. You might think there's nothing we can do about it, but setting boundaries and limiting internet use to only essential tasks can be very helpful. So if one day you wake up and find there is no internet, don't freak out, smash windows or jump in front of cars hoping to get a connection. And one last thing, if you have any old porn magazines lying around, don't throw them away. Hide them under your bed like in your teenage years because you never know if the internet will be around forever.